Ladies and gentlemen, Katie McGrath. I'm so excited to see you all, and I'm equally as excited that there are this many people vaccinated in the state of Missouri. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, welcome to One Degree from Elvis. And tonight, this is my attempt to be known by the company kept by the company I keep. In other words, um, it's about the people I know who know people I like to know, you know? So let's start with the king himself, shall we? A lot of folks don't know that 14-year-old Priscilla Presley was actually a rebound gal after Elvis was dumped by an older woman, 16-year-old Wendy McGrath. <laughs> now, Wendy met Elvis at the um, Knickerbocker Hotel in Los Angeles. She was there having lunch, and he was there filming his first movie, Love Me Tender. Now, I met Wendy decades after that when I married the guy for whom she dumped Elvis. So, yeah. So, <laughs> our husband uh, died in 2001, Wendy's and mine, and in the time since, she and I have become good, f real friends. And uh, these days, when we talk, out of respect, I like to give her at least five minutes before I launch in with more questions about Elvis. <laughs> and uh, like I know you can look it up and know that he was born in 1935 in Tupelo, Mississippi. And he lived in a two-room shack with his parents, Vernon and Gladys Presley until Elvis was three years old, and his dad went to prison for check fraud, and his mom and he moved into her relative's home. 
And that's where the two of them first heard the music of Mississippi Slim and Jimmy Rogers and others like that. And Elvis told Wendy that he remembered as a little boy playing with his trucks on the kitchen table and watching his mom standing at the ironing board, putting on those records and as she pressed men's shirts for five cents each. Mississippi, in the middle of a dry spell. Jimmy Rogers on the piano up high. Mama's dancing with a baby on her shoulders. The sun is setting like molasses in the sky. Ah, oh, the boy could sing. He, he knew how to move and everything. Always wanting more. He kept him longing for. That velvet and that little boy smile Black velvet and that slow southern style A new religion that'll bring you to your knees Black velvet, if you please Wendy told me that Elvis was the kind of guy who was kind to everybody he met, from the homeless people on the street corners of L.A. to the heads of the record studios. And he was just a lovely, kind of shy, southern gentleman who was baffled and deeply uncomfortable about this skyrocketing fame that he received. Up in Memphis, the music's like a heat wave. It's white lightning that's bound to drive you wild. Mama's baby's the heart of every schoolgirl. Love me tender's got him crying in the aisles. Oh, it was a sin the way he moved and everything. Always wanting more. He kept him longing for black velvet and that little boy's smile. Black velvet and the slow southern style. A new religion that'll bring you to your knees. Oh, black velvet, if you please. Every word and every song he ever sang was for you. In a flash, he was gone. It happened too soon. Oh, what could you do? So in cheerier news, 
Uh, around this time, Elvis had his first crossover hit from the country charts to the pop charts. And it was also the first time a number one billboard song was on the subject of suicide. Since my baby left me, I got a new place to dwell. It's down at the end of Lonely Street. It's Heartbreak Hotel, where they'll be so lonely. They're so lonely. They're so lonely they could die. Well, though it's always crowded. You still can find some room Just down in, in Lonely Street They're crying in the gloom And they'll be so lonely They're so lonely They're so lonely They can die See, the composer read an article in the a Memphis newspaper about a young man who was so despondent over his broken heart that he threw himself out the top window. Not a pretty way to go. Well, the bellman's tears keep flowing, the desk clerk's dressed in black. They've been so long on Lonely Street, they're never coming back. Cause they're so lonely, they're so lonely, they're so lonely, they could die. So if your baby leaves you, and you need a place to dwell, just take a walk down Lonely Street, Heartbreak Hotel way. So when we first made this plan to be here tonight, about this time last year, uh, the idea was to have Rick Jensen from New York come with me here and uh, repeat the kind of show that we've done together for a while, and like many of the folks, the singers here tonight too. And uh, it didn't quite work out that way. Uh, I first met Rick years ago at the first cabaret conference in St. Louis. And I met him for the second time the very next morning at 7 a.m. at a recovery meeting in the Central West End. And from that point forward, uh, the music that we created together was inextricable from our need and desire to live sober lives. But uh, Rick's addiction was the me malignant cancer of his soul and his body. And he died from an accidental do overdose on March uh, 23rd, 2021. <sighs> Maybe this is forever fades away 
like a rocket ascending into space Could you not be sad? Could you not break down? After all, I won't let go Until you are safe and sound Until you are safe and sound No one left to please, just you and me. I don't blame you for quitting. I know how hard you tried. If only you could hang on through the night. Cause I don't want to be lonely I don't want to be scared And all our friends Are waiting there Until you are safe and sound Until you are safe and sound There's beauty in release There's no one left to I really thought I could help you. I really tried to save you. I really thought I could heal you. I really thought I could help you. I really know that I loved you. I believe that you loved me. So Rick Jensen was a profoundly gifted name dropper himself. <laughs> he, mainly because he was the music director for singer Nancy Lamott, with whom he toured the United States and Europe, and they, they opened for a lot of really big people. But my favorite name that he dropped from time to time, and some of you may have heard it too, was when uh, the ultra-successful composer and music writer Marvin Hamlish needed to use Rick's studio in Times Square. Why, I don't know, but he, he needed to come there. And so Rick spent days before then cleaning the place from top to bottom, put scented candles in throughout, and as he told me proudly, changed the light bulbs. Now, I don't know why. Anyway, and he also was so excited, he didn't want to lose his way in the conversation, so he made lots of notes about questions he was going to ask and the music he appreciated the most and so forth. So when Mr. Hamlish arrived at the studio, Rick said, of course, may I get you anything? And to which Marvin Hamlish replied, yes, get me a ham sandwich and then get out of here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we wanted to do Rick's arrangement uh, of his favorite Christmas song.
Well, she'd been drinking too much eggnog And we begged her not to go But she forgot her medication And she wandered out into the snow When they found her Christmas morning At the scene of the attack She had incriminating hoof prints on her forehead And claws marks on her back My grandma got run over by a reindeer Coming home from our house Christmas Eve Well, you can say there's no such thing as Santa But me and Grandpa, <laughs> we believe Well, we're so proud of Grandpa He's, he's taken this so well See him in there watching football, drinking beer And playing cards with Cousin Mel It's not Christmas without Grandma And the family's all dressed in black And we can't help but wonder Should we open up our gifts or, or send them back? My Grandma got run over by a reindeer Coming off from our house on Christmas Eve well, you can say there's no such thing as Santa, but me and Grandpa, we believe. Now the goose is on the table and that pudding made out of fig. And the blue and silver candles would have just matched the hair in Grandma's favorite wig. I've told all my friends and neighbors, y'all better watch out for yourselves. They should never give a license to a guy who drives a sleigh and plays with elves. Cause grandma got run over by a reindeer, coming home from our house Christmas Eve. Well, you can say there's no such thing as Santa. Huh. We believe. Well, the year has come and gone since Grandma's tragedy in the snow. My brother married Becky Thompson. They opened up a CBD store in Old Jeffco. There was a virus going round. Papa caught it and he died last spring. And now Mama doesn't seem to want to do much of anything. <clears throat> and me, I spend a lot of time making snowballs up on Fenton Ridge. And throwing them at the passing cars on the Merrimack River Bridge. Oh, Grandma got run over by a reindeer coming home from our house Christmas Eve. And you can say there's no such thing as Santa, but for me and Grandpa, we believe. Oh, baby, we believe. I am very um, proud to introduce to St. Louis, Missouri, Mr. Patrick DeGenero. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. Okay, so it's my, uh, my turn to do some shameless name dropping. 
and uh, I think you better all order another drink. <laughs> <coughs> I work in the uh, nightclub scene and piano bars in New York City. And uh, for a good long time, especially in the early 90s at Don't Tell Mama, we had a rather all-star clientele. So uh, Liza Minnelli was in quite a bit, and I would play for her. But every Saturday night was Michael Ball. Do you know who Michael Ball is? He was the original Marius in Les Miserables. And Billy Porter, who's now very famous, was in every night, and he would sing with me as well. And uh, J Jason Robert Brown, do you know who Jason Robert Brown is? Two-time Tony Award winner. He was a regular there. When I took my break to do my first cabaret show, I hired Jason to be my understudy. Those were the days, huh? And uh, then I guess probably the, the biggest role of my career has been to be a headliner at Birdland for the last 10 years or so. And I got that job, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to share that stage with so many legends in the show business, in show business. And uh, the reason I got that job was because of Jim Caruso. Do you know who Jim Caruso is? He's become quite the entrepreneur and not only a great performer, but a producer as well. And so after I name-dropped all these people, I thought, well, maybe I should do a Jason Robert Brown song. And I thought, well, no, he certainly doesn't need my help. And uh, I'm my own singer-songwriter self. I've got three CDs on iTunes. If you all bought my CDs tonight, I could make probably $6. That'd be good. <laughs> and uh, so I thought I would do a Christmas song because I wrote a Christmas song a couple of years ago and I only got a chance to sing it once because of the pandemic. And since Katie's holiday selection was about a poor old woman being murdered in the snow, I thought perhaps I could bring the mood up a bit. I see people and they're stopping to smile cause they're texting in a holiday style, it's a feeling Once a year and it's special and rare I see Katie And she's looking so smart And she is hosting This spectacular party And we're all here tonight For this good season's tidings to share And I know it's Christmas I can see it's Christmas I know it's Christmas, it's in the air. I see children, and they're playing old games, being reindeer, cause they know all their names, hoping Santa overlooks all the things they did wrong. Me too. I feel younger, even though I'm so old, I feel warmer. Even though it's so cold and the smoke from the chimney Makes everything cozy and warm And I know it's Christmas I can see it's Christmas I know it's Christmas It's in the air All the movies and stories we all love to sing for so long it's the one time of year where we all like to hear the same song. Oh, I hear laughing, and it's a little bit loud. People dancing, and they're drawing a crowd, and the trees lit so bright, strike the sky like a holiday flare. And I know it's Christmas. I can see it's Christmas. I know it's Christmas, it's in the air. I know it's Christmas, and I love Christmas. Merry, merry, merry Christmas. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? It's in the air. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. I just want to point out the obvious humility in my soul for asking a man like that to sing, okay? Can we hear it? But um, the funny thing about this is that from time to time, Rick, Rick Jensen would say to me, now, you know, if I'm ever unavailable for a gig, 
I'd like you to talk to Patrick De Janeiro because I think you'd like him and I think he'd get you. <laughs> oh, sorry. So far it's working out really well. <laughs> anyway, I decided that in this new relationship of ours, it would be important to establish creative guardrails, roles and responsibilities on what we would create and so forth. And yeah. I've always had a hope since the night I won a bistro. I play Saturdays at Birdland and be best friends with Jim Caruso. Now it's time to go out My best and do friend. all we want to be. Cause Jim Caruso's chosen you and me, but mostly me. You and me, but mostly me, are going to change Birdland forever. Because I can sing most anything. And I can sit beside you and watch. Yeah. And every singer has her piano man. Every diva has her driver. And I'll explain things you don't understand. Thank you. I'll look fabulous beside you. And now we're seeing eye to eye. It's so great that we agree. Jim Caruso's chosen you and me. But mostly me. It's incredible. I'm going to do something incredible. I'm going to be the one who plays Birdland for all time. Be my best friend. It's what I imagined that when I turn 67, I do something incredible and blow Caruso's mind. And, and as long as we stick together, together and I stay with what Just I know. Just play that goddamn piano. We'll change Birdland forever. I go to 64 below. So let's, let's keep thinking about, about it and do it. it. How ready and right we are. Cause life, life is about to change for you. And life is about to change for me. And life is about to change for you and me. But me mostly. And there's no limit to what we can do, me and you. But mostly me. me. Oh. oh dear. I don't know who thought of that. right up there with uh, Elvis in terms of being a global icon and influencer of the people of the world is uh, Carol Wojtyla, or his manager changed his name in 1978 to Pope John Paul II. <laughs> and my friend Larry Pry was his music director for his USA tour in 1990. How about that for Larry? And I know Larry C, so, you know, I, I think uh, uh, that makes me pretty cool. Anyway, so Pope John Paul II was a fairly conservative pope. And I had long ago put my Catholic, Catholic ID card in the shredder because of their views on women ordination and same-sex relationships and so forth. But God, there was something about this guy. He just radiated love. And he wasn't from some big fancy Roman family like the last, you know, 5,000 popes. He was from Poland. And he had a real life before he joined the priesthood. He was an athlete and an actor and he wrote love poems to his girlfriend, girl friend, a priest, his own age. Come on, how could you not love this guy? So, and he, uh, he was also 
extraordinarily charismatic. And wherever he went, he attracted enormous crowds. Like when he went to Dublin, half the population from Ireland went to see him. And he established the, the, the record in recorded modern history for the la largest crowd gathered anywhere at Manila for World Youth Day. Four million people. That's a lot of loaves and fishes, you know? <laughs> and do you remember when he came to St. Louis? No one fucking showed up, okay? <laughs> I mean, I remember there were, there were so many stories about how our town was going to be overwhelmed by people coming in from the outside, including hordes of Mexicans who were going to come in because ours was the southernmost stop on the tour. As a result, all sensible people stayed home. And, and the day of his big parade, the people on the news people were breaking into the TV and radio sh shows saying, please go to the parade route. There's no one there. So I grabbed my family, consisting of my atheist husband, my lapsed Catholic self, and our two dogs. And off we ran to the corner of Lindell and Marilyn to wave as he went by. There, le he was leaning on the rails. He looked like Leonardo DiCaprio in the Titanic, <laughs> sailing by in the Pope Mobile unimpeded by a single person or car. Oh, not a big, not a great St. Louis day. But 60 years before that, he was uh, the only surviving member of his family. He was living in a friend's basement in Krakow, Poland. He was uh, doing forced labor in a rock quarry. And by night, he was studying in uh, an underground university because the Nazis had shut down all the institutions of higher learning. And one day he was walking home from the quarry and he was sideswiped by a German army truck and sustained critical injuries from head to toe. And uh, he was nursed back to health by his friends who attended the Krakow Seminary. And he interpreted that experience not the truck part, but the recovery experience as an invitation from God to become a priest. And so he did. I set out on a narrow way many years ago Hoping I could find true love along the broken road. But I got lost a time or two. I wiped my brow and kept pushing through. I didn't see how every sign pointed straight to you. But every long lost dream led me to where you are others who broke my heart they were like northern stars pointing me on my way into your loving arms this much i know is true that god blessed the broken I spent just passing through I'd like to have that time I lost and give it back to you you just smile and take my hand you've been there you understand it's all part of a grander plan that is coming true cause every dream led me to where you are others who broke my heart they were like northern stars pointing me on my way into your loving arms and this much i know 
is true that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you and now I'm just rolling home into your loving arms cause this much I know I know it's true that God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. Yes, God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you. I think um, a bunch of you folks have met my fella, Ch Chet Y. Jr. And it's, yeah, <laughs> yay for Chet, poor Chet. And, um, it's because of him that I've, I'm uh, one degree separated from all kinds of famous people that I'll talk to you about two of them. Um, the first he knows because of his relationship with Daniel J. Watts, who's a Broadway star uh, playing Ike Turner in Tina. And uh, he has become good friends with Tina Turner, and she's been my idol, honestly, since I was a kid. And for three years in a row, I was Tina Turner for Halloween. Oh my God, me too. <laughs> it's going so well, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, um, and I had the sequin dress, the high-heeled boots, and a great wig, don't say it. And uh, I loved her. I also loved her grit the grit with which she sang and also the way she somehow crawled through broken glass toward her own emancipation. I call you when I need you, when my heart's on fire. You come to me, you come to me wild and wired. You come to me and give me everything I need. I need a lifetime of promises in a world full of dreams. And you speak the language of love like, like you know what it means. Let's take our hearts and make them strong Cause you're simply the best You're better than all the rest Oh, you're better than anyone Anyone I ever met And I'm stuck on your heart I hang on every word you say every night and every day in your eyes I get lost I get washed away just to have me here in your arms I could be in no better place cause, cause you're simply the best I am better than all the rest you're better you're better than Anyone I ever met And I'm stuck on your heart I hang on every word you say Oh, don't tear us apart I would rather be dead Each time you leave me I lose control Cause you walk away with my heart and my soul I can feel you with me even when I'm alone. Oh, babe, come back home. 
the other guy, the other person I know through Chet, I'm just one little bitty degree of separation from another hero of mine uh, from my younger years and, and still today, uh, Reverend, Reverend Jesse Jackson. Chet met Reverend Jackson when he was um, a consultant for the Democratic Party in the state of Colorado, and Jesse Jackson's second run for the presidency. And uh, they became good friends and, and remained that way. Now, he was kind of like Pope John Paul II. He had a plenty big life before he went to divinity school. He was a scholar athlete at his university and captain and hero, quarterback of the football team and a very popular fellow. But somehow he feels he got the call and he was in Memphis that day that his hero and mentor, Dr. Martin Luther King, was murdered. And uh, he talked about him and he talked about John Lennon in a speech he gave at the Cannes Film Festival the year that John Lennon was killed. And he said, uh, he was asking John, I call him John, I was asking John about uh, what he perceived as a gap in inspiration for, in music and in art and even in politics. And John Lennon's view he expressed to, to Reverend Jackson was that it's just a lack of imagination among us. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us and above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries it isn't hard to do no borders to kill or die for and no religion to can you imagine all the people I 
I've actually had a few, a few fleeting meeting, fleeting meetings with fame myself. Most of them is a result of working my two dollar an hour gig at the Chase Park Plaza when I was nineteen. Yay! <laughs> and uh, back then, the Chase was the place, as they said. Um, because, you know, this was long before they broke ground on the Ritz-Carlton or the Four Seasons Hotel. It was the, it was the place. And so I, it was the uh, destination for all the local, all the, the visiting athletic teams and uh, Broadway national tour people and uh, peop the symphony people and so forth. And I checked them all in. And uh, ex that doesn't count really as a, as a, one degree, or any degree, I, I know. But I, I, I'd like to tell you about my favorites. Um, the first was uh, George C. Scott, who, uh, I know. Well, I checked, <laughs> I checked in George. And a few minutes later, pring, the phone rings, and I answer at front desk, can you just pick? And I hear this voice, is this the young lady who checked me in? Yes, Mr. Scott. Well, he wanted to know if I would have dinner with him at the Tenderloin Room, which was the fancy place. <laughs> yeah. And so I got my friend Dallas to cover for me at the desk, and I went over, and uh, as I was sitting down, he said, if I'm here by myself, people bug me. So I realized I was the dining equivalent of a, a Tony Award seat filler, but that was okay because, you know, I thought he was great. Anyway, the other guy that I was kind of nuts about was uh, Jack Klugman, who was in town for two weeks doing The Odd Couple with Tony Randall. And every night he would come back from the show and I guess get a second wind, change his clothes, and go out again. And each night he would say to me, hey, do you want to go dancing? And I would say, no thanks. You know, because I was 19 and he was like a thousand or something. <laughs> and uh, on his last night, he said, he was going by and he said, do you know how to foxtrot? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. And he said, well, won't you go dancing with me? And I said, okay. So. Off we went, he said, I'm taking you to this great dancing place. It's called Hurley's. I'm thinking, Hurley's? Does anybody remember Hurley's on the corner of Laclede and Euclid? It was not a dancing place. It was a bar. It was this crummy bar. Well, nice enough, you know. But when Jack Klugman came to town, it became a dancing place. You walk in with, Jet, with Jack, they clear all the furniture and cue up his favorite songs in the jukebox, which included uh, Mighty Love by the Spinners, uh, Will It Go Round in Circles by Billy Preston. And this song, which uh, over which he literally cried on my shoulder as we fox trotted around, because he said it reminded him, it told his story of when his separation from his wife, Brett Summers, that was underway at the time. Hello, it's me I thought about us for a long, long time Maybe I think too much, but something's wrong There's something here that doesn't last too long Maybe I shouldn't think of you as much Seeing you and seeing anything as much as I do you, I take for granted that you'll always be there, or I take for granted that you just don't care. Sometimes I can't help seeing all the way through. It's important to me that you know you're free. Because I never want to make you change for me. Think of me. You know I'd be with you if I 
could I'll come around to see you once in a while And if I ever need a reason to smile And spend the night if you think I should It's important to me that you know you're free. And I never want to make you change for me. Think of me. You know I'd be with you if I could. I'll come around to see you once in a while. And if you ever need a reason to smile, I'll spend the night if you think I could. the chase experience that gave me the biggest thrill ever and really one of the big thrills of my life um, was the night that George Harrison came in with his tour the guys in his band for the concert for the people of Bangladesh and if you remember that time that included Ringo Starr and Billy Preston and Leon Russell and a lot and a lot of other people and uh, I was by myself at, uh, on the front desk that night, and it was just mayhem because, first of all, they were just acting like they had just been let out of cages and were kicking soccer balls around the lobby and just yucking it up. And meanwhile, Leon Russell and I locked eyes, and we had a serious moment. <laughs> and uh, all right. Maybe it was 10 seconds, but I mean, it was really a big deal. And um, he asked me to go to the, con to the concert the next day, and I had to work, and I couldn't. Then he asked me to go to the party, the after party, and I said, sure. So the very next morning, I took the, so the King's Highway bus south to the Southtown Famous, and I picked out a ship and shore white polyester tunic with this yoke stitching, or, or, or this quilting on the back that I thought was quite slimming and stylish. <laughs> anyway, the next night, the fellas got to the, got to the party before my shift was over, and as soon as it was, I raced to the employee bathroom, changed my clothes, put on makeup, and I don't know what did I do, did something to my hair, and she sashayed over to the elevator, and as I was stepping on, so was a, a rather famous slash infamous groupie um, who was well known at the hotel. And she got on the elevator with me and we rode up in silence. And as we got close to the top, I could already hear the unmistakable sounds of Billy Preston on the piano and smell the herb wafting <laughs> through the air. And when we got to the top floor, I heard the bell ting, and as the doors were opening, my new friend said, I hope you have a great time, and I just want you to know that that circus tent you're wearing is on Inside Out. <laughs> so I looked over my shoulder, and sure enough, there was the red sail tag and size 12 ship and shore and big letters on the label, you know, and I was just frozen and watched her slink off the elevator and her sprayed on hip huggers and midriff leather fringed top and I went back down to the first floor and <laughs> without Leon. Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? He said, you'll be coming back this way again, maybe. Baby, baby. 
baby home I love you I really do Long ago And oh so far Before the second show And your guitar It sounds so sweet and clear But you're not really here It's just the radio Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? You said you'll be coming back this way again, baby. Mm, oh, my, my baby, I, I love you. So, so I have to tell you, for a full year after that, I was obsessing about what my life as one of the Mrs. Leon Russells might have been, you know. And Billy Preston, my new friend, would have said something like this. That's the way God planned it. That's the way God wants it to be. I didn't think God had a plan for me or for you, but I don't think, I don't believe in a God that rewards me or um, punishes me or takes care of me or finds me parking spots <laughs> or, but I do believe in some of my beloved friends who have a deep and abiding faith in the God of their understanding. And so I believe in them, and therefore, the way I see it, I'm just one degree separated from, <laughs> you know? And it's because of them that I feel protected and loved and rewarded. What would you think? If I sang out a tune Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ear and I'll sing you a song I'll try not to sing out of key I get by with a little help 
from my friends. I get high with a little help from my friends. I'm going to try with a little help from my friends. Ooh. What do I do when my love is away? On my home, no, 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 I get by with a little help from my friends. I get high with a little help from my friends. I'm gonna try. somebody to love. Is my friend Ray Reed here tonight? Could you stand up, Ray, for just a second? This young man is a friend of Chet's and mine, and he's running for Congress in the second district. And uh, I'm going to ask for a little help from my friends to help this young man take that office. We got you, sweetie. Strawberry for having us here. <laughs> Jim Dolan, the girl I always called Cherokee, and that's not her name Cheyenne. at all. Cheyenne. And your wait staff and bartenders. Thank you guys so much for your hospitality. And, and I want to thank uh, Jean and Tom Townsend for all the work they do for Pianos for People. And uh, our friend, uh, Patrick's and my friend, Lena Katrakas, thank you for, she's our director. And I want to thank my, this good man at the piano who has kind of patched me back together. I love him, Patrick DeGeneiro. Oh, thank you. I get high with a little help from my friends. I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thank you. Yes, we have one more. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. And um, often in the last few months, people have asked me why, if I was having such a great time in New York, did I come back to St. Louis? And there are two reasons, really, two big ones. The first one is I went to Tom Townsend's memorial in uh, March of 2020. And I realized that I loved more people in that chapel than in the eight million people who live in New York City. And the other one is my financial guy said, now, you can live the way you're living in New York as long as you die by the time you're 72. <laughs> if you come to, back to St. Louis, you can live to your 102. Okay. <laughs> Something in your eyes that makes me want to lose myself. Makes me want to lose myself in your arms. And there's something in your voice that makes my heart beat fast. I hope this feeling lasts the rest of my life if you knew how lonely my life has been and how low I felt for so long if you knew how I wanted you to come along and change Well, it feels like home to me. It feels like home to me. It feels like I'm all the way back where I come from. It feels like home to me. It feels like home to me. It feels like I'm home the way back. window breaks down a long dark street and a siren wails in the night I'm alright cause I've got you here with me and I can almost see through the darkness there's light if you knew how much this moment and how long I've waited for your touch. If you knew how happy you're making me. I never thought I'd love anyone this much. But it feels like home to me. It feels like home to me. It feels like I'm all the way back where I come from. University City. It feels like home to me. It feels like home to me. It feels like I'm all the way back where I belong. It feels like I'm all the way back where I belong. Thank you. Thank you.